Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone World Headquarters. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to document my life in the trades. I appreciate you coming by the shop today. Today, working on a flute. We hadn't done any flutes in a while, and we have a great candidate. It's going to be a cool repair. Let me take you through it. So this flute got dropped, and they thought that the body was bent and the body is actually still straight. Now we do have a dent here that we got to correct. I got a, a fun tool I'm going to show you for that. Looks like when it fell it bent the A flat lever. But here's the deal. You see this right hand stack doesn't close at all and it's because this whole shaft and key section is bent. You can see how it V's down right there. And then see the trill keys, how it's coming V's this way, but also it V's down here. Now, the trill key we're going to treat like a trombone slide, so that won't be any problem. The key stack is going to be a little problematic, but I believe we'll be able to get it taken care of. Now, we'll also notice that the pad cups themselves are bent. I'm not going to straighten those at all yet. I'm not going to deal with any of that. What I want to do is I want to deal with this area first. I believe that I can pull this back, straighten it all back out, get everything operating on the shaft correctly and not lose these pads. I believe I can save these pads. So let's see if I can put my money where my mouth is. For starters, this bend is right at the joints. I'm going to flex just a little bit. There's nothing holding. See, this whole rod can flex. And so what I want to do is I believe that I just want to kind of come in and put a little opposing slight pressure. And look how much that straightened already. Now the keys, they actually operate independent again just from, just from doing that. Just from that. So I think we're going to be good on that. The way this horn is built, let's zoom it in, this tab has got the knock pins in it and there's an adjustment screw. I've made this tool, it's just a piece of steel with some heat shrink on it, and I'm going to sneak it under that tab and between the rib. And I just want to do a flexing motion like to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. And let's just see if we can get it to move at all like that. So I'm going to give a couple of pumps to the right and a couple of pumps to the left. Maybe I'll see if I can do just in the center, just to lift it. It doesn't appear that we did anything. So let's go to the next. All right, now I want to get behind the whole length and kind of push, and I want to use the post to kind of help me. Um, not using a just a terrible amount of pressure okay let's look now look we've got much better key action already okay so let's do that again Let's use that pad slick. I'm going to use my finger to my thumb. To 
ease that back up there. Just easy. You can see that, that shaft, how it'll flex. We don't want anything to bind. So we're good there. And we're just going to ease it up. Ease it up. Pretty good. It's coming back. As we look across this now, it's much more level. That is pretty straight. looking good okay now I want to back off the adjustment screws I believe that they were cranked down when they didn't need to be but that's okay that's how it goes see so now we got look at that how about it? <laughs> That's right. Okay, now this F still does not feel good. But it looks like F sharp is hitting before F. Let me grab my light and I can show you that. To so those close. And Mr. F sharp, he closes. But he closes before the F does. So we'll just back that out. All right. Now. We're getting there. A little too much. This is hitting first. This should get the least amount of pull. Primary. Secondary. Thirdly, or tertiary. I remember in one video I said thirdly, and I caught some bunch of flack about it. Okay, so we're looking good. This is getting straightened up. We're going to go ahead and pull this key section off so we can deal with the trail kicks. The D key comes right off. These aren't binding at all. Get our trill keys off here. Pop the swings. And okay. So we can see that we still have quite a bit of bend here. So we're going to do like a trombone slide. We're just going to easily put some pressure on this. Flutes are very delicate. So we're going to sight down. And I can see right in here that we're kicking back this way. So we're going to go opposite. And we're just going to ease on down. And then we're going to cite that again. Now let's see. Can I line this up on the camera to show you how straight this is? Because that's like totally straight. 
So we have no issues in our trail key. All good. Straight. And let's see, can I put it on that line? Yeah, there you go. I believe that'll show that it's lined up pretty good. So that's all good to go. No bind in that at all. Perfect. Okay. Our lower stack was good. Great. Let's put it back together. Now, one thing I am going to address when, when I get the stack back on is uh, the pad cups. At this point, they're straight. I believe the, the shaft is straight. And so we're going to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. Let's get these springs rehooked on the trills. Great. That's awesome. Okay. And drop this key section back in. Now, let's see. I like to unhook my springs. And what we want to look at, let's zoom in. That's pretty good, but you see it's hitting over on this side first. Now I'm going to adjust that pad cup. With no tension on the key, no spring tension, that key falls right back in place. And that one looks good. And remember the E and the D key that were so bad. Those are sealing like champs now. So that's good. Okay. I was not a fan of how much spring t tension this was on, so I am going to adjust this back a little bit F flute players they want to have light and fast and crisp action oh that feels so much better Now I can, can see a little bit of an issue with my D key. And this is not something that I want to go in and start re-shimming everything. The, the pads are at the proper height. They were installed properly at the factory. They're, the horn is like brand new. So... We're not in need of doing anything like that. It's actually, it's all mechanical. And just being very easy on the instrument. That's great. Okay. Now we're going to get our adjustment screws about back in place. And so what I do here is I close, in this case, I close the F, and then I just start lightly touching on that F sharp. And see, it's got a little bit of bounce.
and then I move on. This is the E, it's on the back. D, kind of get it rough back into shape. And with this hand, this is very just, it's, boom. it's just a dead finger. That's all I'm, that's all I'm putting pressure on. That's great. Yep. Pops and we haven't even put a new seat in the pads yet. That's going to be great. Okay, now let's get the upper stack dropped back in. Good tell there is that when you close your A, so it closes the B flap, then that, and then close your F, and that'll tell you where it hits this B flap and let you know how much extra you've got. So you can see that, you see that bit of bounce? That bit of bounce is the issue. There's an adjustment here that we can take care of for that. So I'm going to do that. But first, we're going to take this dent out. I'm going to use the Dentomatic. You've heard me talk about my friend Engineer Dave before and things that he's built. So this knob turns a rod and connects to this bit of plastic here and raises it up to a fixed amount and so I marked my spots so you can see I've marked the dent and I know I'm about to the mark and you can see the tool working And you just walk up that dent. Is that not the coolest? I love this tool. It only goes to a fixed height. And so he made me some different some different inserts. But that's all it is, is it, it just stretches and works just that spot of the dent. It does not work the entire tube. That's what's so beautiful about it. <laughs> so it's just a fixed amount. And you just work through the, you just work through the dent. That's it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. Now back over at the bench. That's where our dent was. Ha! Isn't that great? That's a cool tool, man. Okay. Now we're going to straighten the A flat. So for that, just grab them with some Swedish pliers. And just Pulling that back straight, getting it, get it centered, get it centered between the double G keys. Looks good. At the proper angle, so it's parallel to the tone hole. So. nice pop there we go okay so now we're gonna put it in the oven get the pads reseated when I clamp my keys I only clamp on the keys that are closed 
that the, that your fingers touch. I don't clamp all of them um, because you're not going to touch this key or this key or this key when you're playing. So my theory is is that just I want it to be like I'm actually playing it. The other thing that I'll show is that these clamps they're great they last a lifetime but they have so much smack and they're they're very clampy they 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 clamp tight we want to play remember with the lightest possible touch so i actually go in and torch mine to where they're hardly springy at all and that gives me such a light clamp. The seat is very light. I'm not trying to overcompensate by pushing the full, by pushing the wool down so hard, because that wool is it's cotton. It's just going to eventually come back out, and you lose the seat, and then the horn doesn't play good. So by making the pad cups level, by making sure that the pads are properly installed, doing all of those things. Then when you go to put the seat in it, then you use the lightest possible clamp that you can and you have a great result. So you can file that away. Okay, let's get it put in the oven. My pad oven is homemade. Found this old metal mailbox on the side of the road special delivery i put a high heat bulb in it so this gets to about it gets warm and does a good job it does exactly what an oven is supposed to do i let uh, this particular brand of instrument i let it cook for about 15 minutes so i'm going to let that go and we'll check back it's like cooking a steak or something i haven't watched any of the video back but i don't believe that i showed this tool well enough so he it's this block this handle turns and raises and lowers this bit of plastic and then you can pull that out and that's the disc that engineer dave made for me and I've got different ones and I can replace them. They've got different heights, but that's what it does. That's just the coolest. And it just works that specific spot. Thank you, Engineer Dave. I love this tool. So anyway, I'll check back with you when the horn is all cooked. Well, all right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you stopping by the shop today. This one came out great. I love that you can't even see the dent. And you can't see any of the damage either. The player uh, was just so worried that her instrument was destroyed and nothing could be farther from the truth um, plays as good as new feels looks as good as new never knew the damage happened and i like actually a, a lot more that she won't have to press the keys nearly as hard so we lightened up that spring tension and man that horn just pops that's good job there well, we're doing really well here, and I'm glad that you're doing really well also. I appreciate you stopping by the shop today. This is Wesley, signing out.